Hello, gorgeous people of the internet. Happy Thursday. I hope you're all doing amazing. If you are here with me live, go ahead and hashtag live. Let me know where you're from. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Let me know that you're here. Drop a comment, drop a like, drop a heart. And if you're watching the replay, then go ahead and hashtag replay. So I'm super excited about this live today because I, there was a question that I got the other day. Um, and instead of answering that question, I wanted to do a live about it instead. And so today we're going to talk about the healthy evolution of a relationship and when it's appropriate to give girlfriend privileges, right? And so I'm going to share with you um, what the question was and what post it was pertaining to. And then we're going to go into the whole live experience. So the I made a post the other day that said, stop giving girlfriend privileges to someone who doesn't want you to be their girlfriend. And the post about what girlfriend privileges are, are physical intimacy, spending the night together or multiple days in a row, going on trips and vacations with them, being there for emotional support, exclusivity, as in like you're not seeing anybody else, um, small gifts or tokens of affection, helping them around the house, bringing them around your friends and your family, accommodating his schedule, always answering their calls or texts, cooking for them, and giving them words of affirmation. So these are the girlfriend privileges that I was talking about. And specifically, this is the question that I got pertaining to these two posts. So I totally get this and understand I'm guilty of doing all of these things in the past before a commitment. I do have a question though, and I mean it with so much respect. Aren't we supposed to be showing our true selves to these guys we're dating so they know what they'd be getting? If we don't do any of these things, isn't it making it look like we don't do them at all? I keep thinking a man would want to see what we have to offer on top of our fun personality, great career, and beauty. Um, so that's the question. And so my specific post was about a guy that doesn't want you to be their girlfriend, a guy that doesn't want commitment because... I I used to be this person, and most of the women that I've worked with have, have done this, where they're giving girlfriend privileges to somebody who is emotionally unavailable, doesn't want commitment, doesn't want to settle down with them, um, doesn't isn't showing up, isn't putting in effort, isn't doing the things that the man needs to do in order to earn those privileges specifically. So in that post, I was really mostly, I, I was talking about not giving any of these privileges to a man that doesn't want commitment, that isn't pursuing you, and that isn't moving things forward with you. And so if you, if that resonates with you, if you continue to do this, and you're giving all these privileges away to somebody who hasn't given you commitment or doesn't want commitment with you, I would really think about that and say, why am I doing this? Because when we do these things, it's because we're performing, we're trying to earn love, we're trying to earn the unattainable man's love. And that comes from a rejection and abandonment wound. And so if you are that person, I would sit on this and think about this and ask yourself, why, why do I continue to do this, right? And so what we're gonna dive into is the evolution of a healthy relationship and when it's appropriate to give girlfriend privileges. And as always, I'm going to give you some of my personal experience. And so I always used to be the woman that would rush commitment so that I could feel secure. And so a lot of the times I didn't even like the person that I was dating necessarily. And so I would need to know you know, where things were going. And I was so focused on if this person liked me rather than if I liked them. And so before we would, it, it would even be appropriate for us to be boyfriend and girlfriend or for us to be exclusive. Um, we would jump right into things. And that was because I had a, uh, abandonment wound. And so I would also, you know, I would, I would let my emotions run the show. Right. And, and let me know if this resonates with you. If you tend to be the person that you find somebody that you like and or maybe you're like, oh, this person has potential or, or you know, this person, they seem all right. 
And then you jump into relationship with them right away, or maybe they're emotionally unavailable and you're giving all of yourself to them without them giving you any kind of pursuit or moving forward in the relationship. So if you've experienced that, just drop it in the comments, um, because this was literally my life for 12 years. And so I like to say that we're striving for long-term commitment with men who cherish us and that are deeply committed to us, right? And so if we are rushing commitment, if we're rushing to get to that next level, if we're rushing to need that person to give us everything now and making that person the one before they've even shown us all their cards, we're setting ourselves up for trauma bonds and lots of heartbreak, okay? And so my biggest thing for myself and my clients is striving for long-term, sustainable, healthy commitment with men who are healthy, healthily in their masculine and who are deeply committed and cherish us. And so relationships that start off hot tend to burn quickly. So you know that like chaotic chemistry that you're like, oh my gosh, it feels like this person's my soulmate. We've been talking for a week. I would slow your roll there because when we have that kind of chaotic chemistry, that is the subconscious recognizing that someone can hurt us in a way that we've been hurt before. And so sometimes when we've experienced trauma, you know, I always talk about the root cause um, for our toxic relationship patterns. And so if you feel like home with somebody, that's not necessarily always a good thing. And so this is where, you know, we really have to look at our patterns. If you feel like home with somebody right away, there's the safe home. And then there's the my childhood home kind of deal. And so being at home, feeling at home with somebody or, you know, feeling like you've known this person your entire life and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so in love with this person. It's been just a few weeks and, you know, we spend all of our time together and we talk on the phone, you know, multiple times a day for hours on end and all the things. I would slow that down a little bit because if you have a pattern of of rushing relationship, trauma bonds, toxic relationships, experiencing narcissistic abuse and um, attracting emotionally unavailable people, then that's going to feel like home for you because that's what you've experienced your entire life. And so the way that I believe that things should go and what's worked for me and what's worked for my clients is having a slow evolution. We want to allow our emotional maturity to lead the relationship rather than our inner child. If our inner child is running our relationships, you're going to know because it's going to be all the focus is on the other person. We're putting the other person on a pedestal. We're performing. We're over giving. We're abandoning ourselves. We're getting lost in the other person, right? And so the adult, mature, healthy version of this is allowing yourself to be with this person, but also still standing strong in who you are and having that separate. So a healthy high value woman and a healthy high value man, they're intertwined to a degree, but also you're not getting lost in them. And so in my last relationship, in my last relationship, um, I felt like we rushed into things quickly. And I didn't give myself enough time dating him before we rushed into relationship. And I think this is where a lot of people get messed up too, is like when we're manifesting our ideal partner, they're like, oh, this person has showed interest in me. I like them right this second. And, you know, now we're in this relationship and then it breaks down three months later, six months later, whatever the case may be, or the trauma bond happens and, and it goes on for years. And so when my ex and I got together, um, you know, I was a guest on his podcast and he was a coach and it seemed like a dream come true. Um, and I hear this all the time too, like the, the airplane stewardess and the pilot getting together, the nurse and the doctor, I can't tell you how many like romantic scenarios that, um, that, that happened for the clients that I've worked with and for myself, just 
for them to realize it was a, a nightmare in reality. And so, you know, I think when we talk about manifesting our ideal partner, we get caught up in, we meet somebody, it feels that like chaotic chemistry. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're super intertwined and then you get your heart broken or it ends up being toxic. And so with my ex and I, um, I think if I would have dated him without committing to him so early on for a longer period of time, that I don't think that I actually would have chose him. Yes, I was in love with him um, during our relationship and we actually did have a beautiful relationship and that relationship was very healing for me in a lot of ways. Um, and when I think about when I had thought back to everything that I learned in that relationship and the way that things started off, I realized that there were some differences in the way that we operated that turned out to be bigger problems in the, in the end, right? And so when we're dating, the whole point of dating and I know a lot of people say they hate dating, but the whole point of dating is getting very clear on who you are, what you like, what you don't like, and experimenting with that. And so if you are just trying to rush commitment with the first person that shows you interest, then you're going to set yourself up for a lot of internal pain. We want to be able to date somebody and decide if we choose them. And you don't really know somebody fully. You, you don't know if you truly want to be with that person unless there is a consistent evolution of the relationship over a few months, right? And so when it comes to the initial states, stages of dating, I don't believe that there's one person out there for everybody. I don't believe that there's one soulmate out there for any, for, for everyone. I believe that there's multiple different people for your energetic match at the, at whatever stage you are in your life. That's what I believe. And so when we talk about moving forward in these stages of dating, allow yourself to not get fixated on one person until you found somebody who totally aligns with you and you actually had enough time dating them to think that you guys would be a good match and you're getting your needs met and things are going well and you don't feel like there's a lot of drama or chaos or love bombing going on. Like a three month period is a really good idea to really see who somebody is. Um, a lot of the times when we're in the beginning stages, that honeymoon phase is what people really get swept up on. And so that honeymoon phase is when all the oxytocin is flooding our body. The oxytocin is the love hormone um, that gets released and it literally makes all judgment go out the window, it makes all judgment go out the window. And so when you are rushing this and you guys are all hopped up on this oxytocin, um, then it's really easy to overlook incompatibility and red flags. So what I would encourage any of you to do that are wanting to date, wanting to find a partner is start out by going on multiple dates with multiple different people and allowing yourself to start building different connections so that you can see what you like and what you don't like and discover yourself through dating. This was like the best thing that I had done. And I learned so much about myself when I was freely dating and I was on apps and I was going out on dates and, um, you know, just having a great experience. And so allow yourself that freedom instead of matching with one person or going out on a date with one person and deciding, yep, this is it. They're the one. Allow yourself time. You don't need to rush this commitment. When you rush this commitment, that's when things are going to break down. And that's why a lot of what I see is women that are getting really caught up in relationship and then three months goes by, the oxytocin wears off and then the relationship breaks down. That's why you get stuck in a lot of these short-term relationships is because you're, you're not um, having a slow, steady evolution. You're getting caught up in the oxytocin and the love bombing. And then most likely 
there's a fear of intimacy for the two people in relationship. And then that's why after the, the honeymoon phase is over, this typically three months, the relationship breaks down, you start getting close, you know, there's that emotional closeness and that's fearful for the both people. And then it breaks apart. So if you've had a series of short-term relationships, this is why. So if that resonates with you, comment below if you've had short-term relationships. That was most of my, my dating life was these short, short um series of relationships that would break down after the honeymoon phase was over, after that oxytocin wore off. And then you realize, oh my gosh, either who is this person or this person saying that about you? Um, and so when we're in the dating phases, we want to be able to be with somebody who is consistent. They're showing up for us and they are moving the relationship forward. So in the beginning, what I believe to be true is you hang out, you know, once a week, you're going on a date with this person. I know uh, I used to be the person and I've worked with a lot of women who are seeing a guy who they just met three, four times a week, or they're already spending the night with that person, or they're already going on vacations with that person, which I've also been guilty of. And so we want to start out having these standards and boundaries of like, this is what I'm available for. I want to see this person once a week. We can talk in between that date. It doesn't have to be every day. We don't have to be on phone calls, but having that, that time to also live your life, date other people, go out on this date and see if you actually like and enjoy this person. And when you're allowing this space, you're not letting your oxytocin run the show. You're actually being very emotionally intelligent and letting your emotional maturity and your adult self be in this relationship. And so I also believe that we shouldn't commit to someone or want to be with someone unless we can fully accept them for who they are without wanting to change certain things about them. So a lot of what I see as well is people trying to make these incompatible relationships work. So they're incompatible, but they have this hot chemistry. And so they're trying to, to make this, this thing work, trying to make, make the relationship work, and it's causing a lot of pain. You're trying to change this about your partner. You're trying to manipulate them in that way. You're trying to do this. You're mothering them. You're scolding them. You're, you're doing all the things. We need to stop trying to make incompatible relationships work. And the way that we do that is by having a slow evolution of dating, by allowing yourself to see if you like this person consistently over a course of about a three month period, maybe four months. And so the way that this evolution will go is you hang out once in the beginning. You hang out once, once, um, once a week in the beginning. And then you see how he shows up on that date. If he texting you? Is he calling you? Is he showing his interest, right? And then after him doing that for, you know, a few weeks, a month, then you move forward to a couple times a week. And then you talk even more throughout, um, through in between the, I'm losing my words. <laughs> you're talking even more throughout um, the, the space in between the dates. And then you start to see, is he still pursuing? Is he still showing up the way that I want him to show up? And after, you know, you guys have had, let's say six dates, that's when I'd say you can start having home dates, you know, inviting this person to your home. And so I'm going to share with you the evolution of the way that the person that I've been dating and the way that our relationship has begun to unfold. And so throughout the evolution of our relationship, you know, we met on a dating app and we matched, we decided that we were going to meet each other. And then we didn't talk for like a week and a half until we actually had our first date. 
And then we had our first date and it was amazing. And we had so much fun. Um, we kissed at the end of the date. He picked me up at my house. He opened up the door for me. He dropped me off. He walked me to my door. All of those are really green flags for me. So I was like, hell yes. And I want to kiss this guy. So we stopped there. I didn't invite him in, which is something that I would have done in my past. And I know that there's a lot of you out there that would have done the same thing if the date went, went really well. Right. And then we set up a date for the second week. We talked a little bit in between our first date and our second date. Um, not a lot. I think we talked like, you know, either, I think we talked every other day and then we had our second date. Our second date went absolutely incredible. And again, he picked me up at my home. He planned the date. He did all the things, um, opened my door for me, walked me to my door, took me out on a, a really beautiful date, really fun, exciting date. He planned everything. Again, all green flags. So you see how this person is already starting to show up consistently. And it's not like, oh, he showed up consistently every day because we hung out three days a week because that's not sustainable. It's like, you see how somebody is showing up consistently over time. So again, the third week that we started dating each other, he did the same thing. We started, we talked every other day, probably. Um, we went out on our third date. It was amazing. We had so much fun, did all of the consistent things that he had been doing. Again, a green flag. And he wasn't trying to push things. He wasn't trying to rush things. Neither was I. And then we started to feel comfortable enough to start seeing each other twice a week. And we did that for a while. And we saw each other uh, and we started to talk more every day. And we weren't texting each other, you know, constantly throughout that day. We were just, you know, here and there. Because again, you don't want to get so caught up in having this person be your everything when you're just trying to figure out if this person is the right person for you. And while we were doing this, I was also dating other people and I was still on dating sites. Um, and then he asked me to, he was going to be gone on a vacation for, he said three weeks, but it only ended up being, I think, two weeks. And he told me, you know, after the fact that he was like, I knew that I really liked you and I didn't want you to lose interest in me while I was gone. So he invited me on his trip for like four days out of the trip. And so I flew out to see him. I think this was about the two month mark that, um, that I decided to go on a trip with him, but it was only because he was so consistent. He was doing all the right things. He was moving the relationship forward. He was initiating. He was planning. He was pursuing me the whole way around. And there was nothing at all that didn't feel good to me. And so I checked in my body if this felt good for me, for, for me to go on a trip with him. And so I went on a four-day trip with him. Uh, we didn't sleep together during this time because I said that I didn't want to um, have sexual relations until I was exclusive or in a committed relationship. And so we went on this trip together and it was incredible, amazing, like, you know, incredible, just very, very happy. You can see like, I'm, I'm smiling about it, just thinking back to it. And that was a really amazing point for us because that really deepened our connection. And it wasn't that I went on a trip with him because he, um, because he wasn't showing consistency or wasn't showing that he was moving the relationship forward or because I was doing all the performing and, and needing from him, but because of that slow evolution that we had already had, and that made me feel like this was an appropriate time to go on a vacation together. And so when we both got back from this vacation, we continued to see each other multiple times a week. And he has never once been inconsistent. I've never experienced inconsistency from him ever in his energy, in the way that he's shown up, in any of it. And that's made me feel very, very safe. But having this kind of slow evolution um, can be really, really boring for those of you with attachment trauma because you're used to things going on really strong and then them pulling back, right? If you've experienced that, drop it in the comments. So that's why slow evolution, you'll think that it's boring. 
You'll think that it's boring, that it's not moving fast enough, that this person isn't the right person for you. And then you'll fall into the trap of being with somebody who love bombs you and, um, you know, says all the right things, does all the right things. You get really enmeshed really, really quickly. And then lo and behold, it breaks down. So once we got back from the trip and, you know, we, again, we're seeing each other a couple times a week, we decided that, um, he asked me if I wanted to be exclusive with him. And of course I said, yes. And I told him, I was like, you know, there's exclusivity and then there's, um, you know, us becoming in a relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend. And so I said, for me to feel comfortable being a girlfriend, I want to meet your family first. I want to meet your friends and I want to see how I feel in, in that area. And so I didn't even meet his family and friends until three months in, because I really wanted us to, um, I really wanted us to build our connection first and he still hasn't met my family yet. Um, but I met his friends and his family and that was another deciding factor for me. I'm like, do I choose this? And each, each date that him and I had went on, I'm asking, I'm asking myself, is this what I choose? Is this what I want? And every single time it's been a fuck yes. And so again, when I met his family and when we became exclusive, I asked myself, is this a full body fuck yes for me? And so each time that's what I'm asking myself and that's what feels good to me. And he hasn't met my daughter yet. That's something that we have um, been planning. And when I started, you know, kind of giving back in this was like about our sixth date. Um, you know, like I said, he planned everything and he's initiated everything. And then on our, um, you know, when we started seeing each other twice a week, typically, um, you know, he would come over and I would cook dinner for us and then we'd have a fire. We'd do something like that. Um, sometimes he takes me out both days on the days that we hang out. Um, but you know, that kind of girlfriend privilege of me cooking for him after our sixth date, he was consistent and moved everything forward for me to feel comfortable to do that. That was something that I wanted to make sure I was comfortable with. I said that I didn't want, um, to go to each other's houses until I was ready. And so I kept that boundary and that standard for myself and he followed that. And so, you know, when it, when we talk about, um, the girlfriend privileges, like spending the night or multiple days in a row with one another, that's when, um, I didn't do that with him until we were exclusive. And that's what felt best to me. Um, because again, he did all the right things to earn that. Why would we give away our body and our time and our energy if somebody is not consistently showing up for us to make us feel safe enough to do that? A lot of the time when we do that, it's because we're wanting it for the wrong reasons. We're wanting to, um, you know, we want that instant gratification. And when it comes to going on trips and vacations, that's also a girlfriend privilege that you don't have to wait to be a girlfriend for. But if they're like I did, um, no, I'm saying <laughs> not that I waited to be a girlfriend, but I went on a trip with him after he was very consistent and showed that he was moving the relationship forward. And he continuously showed up in the way that felt right for me. But again, it's like, we're doing these things before these guys are even giving us anything. We're, we're receiving crumbs and we're giving everything and, and they're getting everything from us in hopes that they'll start giving back to us. But that's not the way that it works. I leaned back. I allowed myself to be pursued by him. And in that, he was getting things back from me, but it's always been because he's pursued me first and he's taken the moves first. And then I followed his lead. And so then when you think about, um, you know, uh, I'm looking at the list of girlfriend privileges. So this is something that you show over time when there's been consistent effort because that is the way that you build a stable foundation you want a stable foundation to build on we're always looking for longevity and so um 
And so when it comes to giving these, these girlfriend privileges, make sure that this person actually is pursuing you. Like, you know, my post was, was mainly about giving girlfriend privileges to somebody who doesn't want you to be their girlfriend, who's emotionally unavailable, who doesn't want commitment with you. But if you stop doing that, then you'll energetically open yourself up for somebody who does want you to be their girlfriend. And so again, like that small evolution, but if you're already buying them gifts when it's like, you know, so early on and when you're baking for them or cooking for them and you're doing all these things for them, it's performative. And that's when you're doing for them, which is being in your masculine instead of allowing yourself to be pursued first. And then it's like, okay, this person has shown me their interest and I'm going to start feeling comfortable giving this and cooking for them here and then doing this here and doing this here. So that's the, the natural evolution of things to be able to build that stable foundation and longevity. And then you're not caught chasing men. Because again, that's what I see all the time. And what I've always done is I'm doing these things so that he'll like me. I'm doing these things so that I can get commitment. I'm doing these things so that I can do X, Y, Z. And that's a codependent, anxious attachment and manipulative behavior. And so if we're doing things because it feels good and because we want to in, at, on a core level, because we always have to check with our motive. When I cooked him dinner for the first time, when it was like six weeks in, it was because I genuinely wanted to, and it felt good for me. And that was something that I wanted to share with him. Um, and then again, with the vacation around two months in, maybe it was two and a half. I think it was two and a half. But again, I, we weren't spending multiple days in a row together. We had our specific times and our spe specific days, <laughs> couldn't get that word out, specific days that we hung out. And when you do that, your value goes up in someone else's eyes when you have these boundaries and standards and you're slowing things down so that you can actually decide if you want to be with this person or not, then your value is automatically going, going to raise in their eyes. They're going to want to pursue you. They're going to want to chase you. And it's not because you're playing games. It's because you're being in your feminine energy where you're letting them pursue men are, that's what men are designed for. But if you're getting crumbs and you're settling for crumbs and then you're giving your whole heart, that doesn't really make any sense, does it? But that's what, you know, you're used to. That overperforming, overgiving, overextending, people pleasing. And so by doing it this way, you are allowing yourself to not self-abandon. You're, you're standing strong in who you are. You're having a separate life from this person. You're living your life on, you know, on the days that you're not seeing this person. And then slowly your lives begin to intertwine more and more. So when you become the girlfriend, you know, you start having family functions together. They meet your kids um, and you start, you know, really intertwining your lives at this point. But the, the first three months are really important. And that's what sets the foundation. And that's what we need to be really, really conscious of is having that stable foundation where we're having our own life. We're not getting wrapped up. We're not getting lost in, in this person. And you're also dating other people to see what fits best for you instead of finding the first person that you feel like you're interested in, scooping them up and saying, okay, we're going to make this work. And then you find out that you're incompatible. And then you're spending so much time and energy trying to make something work that's not going to work or both of you aren't going to be happy. So we're looking for compatibility. We're looking for the slow evolution, steady foundation. And of course, that's not sexy. That's not sexy. The sexiness is when, you know, it's chaotic and um, and you're having to chase and it's so exciting and you're having this like, you know, chaotic chemistry and all the stuff. I know that feels exciting, but you can also, when you shift out of that, when you heal the wounds that are driving that, you'll be able to have that slow evolution. And this is where we're overcoming 
self-abandonment or overcoming, um, you know, our inner child wounding that's driving these relationships that are really intense in the beginning that break down a couple months later. So that's the way that, that I see the evolution of relationship and what's worked for myself and what's worked for my clients. Um, and having, having those girlfriend privileges come from a place of want rather than I need to do this. And so if we're starting off you know, immediately cooking this guy at dinner on our first date. You're trying to show him all you got. You're trying to bring out your best sex moves like three dates in to try to get him to, to see how good you are. Think about that. Why do I want to do the things that I'm doing? Do I have a history of overgiving? Do I have a history of chasing? Do I have a history of um, performing for love? And when you can recognize that, it's like, okay, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to let him pursue me. And when it feels good for me, when it truly feels good for me, and it's not coming from an unaligned place, then I'll feel good giving back in that way. So I hope that this was helpful. I would love to hear your biggest takeaway from this live, whether it's about girlfriend privileges, whether it's about the slow steady evolution of a healthy relationship. Um, I would love to hear it. Awesome, everyone. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and um, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye, everyone.